Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to talk to you guys about the problems of Mormonism from my perspective. And again, this is my Thursday Thought, so it's my thoughts on this topic. Um, you know, you don't have to agree with me. In fact, if you disagree or if you do agree, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I struggle quite a bit because as much as I love the Latter-day Saint movement, I love Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon. I love so many things about the gospel of Jesus Christ as presented in our worldview. I'll say it like that. I don't like the pride. I don't like the egoism. I don't like the fact that we as a movement are failing miserably. There are so many other restorationist movements that came out, came around the same time that Joseph Smith was called to start our movement. And yeah, some of them were splintered or whatnot, but they're all growing way faster and way better than us. And yes, all churches are taking a hit right now. People are moving away from organized religion because they're tired of all these churches focusing on the needs of the church, the organization, instead of the needs of the church, the actual people that the organization was created to serve. I go on Facebook every day. Partially because it's part of my job, you know, I'm in marketing. Partially because I, I do like talking to people and seeing what's going on in the world. But I just see so much hate. I just see so much pride. I just see so much fighting. Why on earth, if we all believe in the Book of Mormon, we all believe Joseph Smith is a prophet, why could you honestly believe that everybody except for your group of 12 people are apostates? Do you honestly believe that just because you have, you know, 3 million active people and 15 million people on your on your record, that you are the one and only true church and everybody else is an apostate? Do you really believe that everyone is going to hell or a lower kingdom just because you disagree with them? One of my favorite quotes from Joseph Smith, and I'm going to paraphrase it here. There was an, an older gentleman who they were going to put on trial because he said something that they didn't like. And, and he said, you know, I, I, Joseph Smith said, I don't like this. I don't want to be a part of a group that kicks people out because you know they have a differing opinion on a doctrine or theology. And yet that is exactly what we have become as a people. We are constantly fighting and over ridiculous things. I've seen people fight about whether or not Joseph Smith was a polygamist, whether or not Joseph Smith put a rock in a hat to translate the Book of Mormon, whether or not Joseph Smith did X, Y, or Z. And then you can get into whether or not Brigham Young was called or... James Strang or whatever. And of course, I'm an apostate because I say that all of these people were called of God for their own various branches of our shared movement. If we're all apostates, then we're all going to hell. We're all not good enough, and none of this is true. I really want everyone to recognize and realize this. When you point your finger and say that someone else is an apostate, what you're doing is you're saying there is a potential chance that, that I am wrong and that I am the apostate. Because by making that divide, you're saying, I'm putting a line here. And if you want to be on my side, you've got to agree with me. And if you're not, you're over here. Well, first off, Jesus is always going to pick the people who are cast out. That's what he does. Read, read the New Testament. He was always with those that everybody else that society said weren't good enough, weren't right, were hypocrites, apostates, or whatever. And then the people who were calling them such things, he was telling them, no, you are the hypocrite. You are the apostate. I think he just said a hypocrite. I don't think he ever used the word apostate. But I want to testify to you that when you point your finger at someone else and you say that they are wrong and they need to get with your program, it's reflected back at you because we're finite beings. We don't know all things. There are things that everyone is wrong about. There are things I'm wrong about. There are things that you're wrong about. And if what God is really looking at is, okay, i got to tally up all these things that are wrong, then the grace of Jesus Christ and the atonement of Jesus Christ are a complete and utter waste of time, and God has no power. But I want to testify to you that God is all-powerful, that the atonement is all-powerful, and that grace is all-powerful. And I believe that this problem in Mormonism stems from the fact that we moved away from the magical worldview, as some people like to call it, including myself, and we basically moved to a scholarly worldview. Yes, it's fascinating 
to take all these documents and pour over them and, and try to come up with these theories on what really happened and what this means and what that means and why did they use this word at this time and this word at this time? Are they the same thing or are they something different? But at the end of the day, are we historians of religion or are we a people of God? Are we theologians and, and, and scholars trying to, to basically understand from a intellectual idea of what God could be? Or are we working to know the Lord as a personal friend? One of my favorite testimonies of God comes from Spencer W. Kemble. He said a lot of things that I disagree with. He said a lot of things I do disagree with. He was a human being. He was fallible, just like me. One point someone asked him about his testimony in God, and he said that God or Jesus is his very best friend. That is the testimony that we all need to strive to have. Did he ever see God in the flesh? I don't know. It's not, not really none of my business. And, and their sect, they believe it's too sacred to talk about. So if he did or if he didn't, we're never going to know. But that perspective, the fact that he was constantly striving to make his friend happy, to be the type of person he thought his friend wanted him to be. All those things that he did wrong, grace makes up the difference. I believe that we as a people need to move away. Well, we don't need to move away from the intellectualism, but we need to move away from the obsession with intellectualism and stop pushing the relationship to the side. And we've got to make the relationship the forefront. And the intellectualism, the side dish. We'll, we'll say it like that. So the, the main course is our personal relationship with God. And the intellectual, the theology, the philosophy, that can be a side dish. If we can do this, if we can truly be a people of God and not merely a, a school of students just trying to memorize scriptures and explain rationally what things mean, then we can become the people of miracles. We can become the prophetic people that the Lord has called us to be. That's my Thursday thought, and I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.